The term quality first teaching is not a new concept in education. However, the new SEN code of practice emphasizes the importance of this approach. As a result, school leaders and teachers are being challenged to reflect their own ability to meet the needs of all learners in their classes. The Oxfordshire School Inclusion Team have been supporting leaders to develop inclusive teaching and learning with the aim of closing the achievement gap between learners who statistically meet national benchmarks and those who currently fall short. Along this journey of school improvement, the inclusion team sees schools in different contexts rising to meet the challenge in their own individual way. In this film, we will be seeing how four schools across Oxfordshire have been developing their teaching staff to meet the challenge of improving educational outcomes for all. Quality first teaching is about all learners in the classroom making progress and learning at the right level of challenge. Of course, this is the aim of every teacher, but what is sometimes difficult to know is what it actually looks like when you see inclusive teaching and learning in action. Over the course of two days, we set out to capture what quality first teaching looks like to an observer and spoke to a wide variety of stakeholders about their understanding of excellent practice and where they are in their learning journey. If I walked into a classroom and, it's, and, and it looked truly inclusive, I'd, all the learners would be learning at just, just the right level. They'd have everything they needed to learn independently. It's making it exciting, so it engages the children that need to be engaged and using resources as well, mm -hmm. that you often get um, children getting a concrete understanding of what they're learning. It's accessible, everybody is learning, everybody is finding it challenging and everyone has an opportunity to learn. I've seen really effective practice where the um, teaching assistant has actually led um, part of the teaching of the main class and the teacher's been able to then work in small group activity with certain students that have particular needs. What you see more often than not is, is the children doing more work than the teacher um, and the, the, the children being able to use the resources around them, so being independent. What they do is like they, they come around they talk to you and make sure that you're okay. Like, if you're stuck, then they'll help you. So whatever activity I want them to, to do, because that's going to lead to a certain um, level of learning, I always need to think about, well, what about if they get stuck? This is what I'm going to do to support them. Well, what if they don't get that? What am I going to do to support that? OK, but they're going to get, some of those are going to get that really easily, so what am I going to do to stretch them even further? So that's why you would have seen in the lesson all the different colour codings, so that the students are really aware of all the different levels of learning that there are with one objective. We've decided that all learning objectives should be short and clear and that the children should generate their own um, success criteria as part of the learning um, and really enable them to come up with those themselves through teaching that kind of scaffolds and foregrounds those elements within the lesson. To try and scaffold writing, what we've really tried to do is start take it from the starting point. If, stu if students can speak it, then that's the foundation for them being able to write it. So what we often do is take kind of small steps to, uh, with Skittles activity or question activities, get them to speak about a text, whatever that is, share it in a pair, share it in a, as a bigger group or with the class, and then so they don't have to commit their ideas straight away where it's you know it's scary and they might not be able to undo it. To use their whiteboard pens on the desk or mini whiteboards, but it's helpful for the teacher as well because as you're kind of circulating around the room, you can kind of see immediately who then needs that little bit of extra input or if you've got a group of students who are really understanding it then you can say okay could you now go and kind of help so and so and be a lead learner on that for example that can be really powerful. I think the, the biggest development in my own teaching practice I've, I've noticed over the last few years is um, is, is, a, is a use of effective modelling. I think when I first came to teaching I would explain what I wanted the students to do and sort of go right there you go, I've explained that you do it. I think I sort of, I didn't always appreciate how much the students, how little they really understood of what I was asking them to do, how they really, they didn't have models in their life for that kind of writing or that kind of work. And the more I've provided those kind of models and broken down those models and deconstructed those models, that makes things so much more accessible for students, especially those weaker students or students who haven't got that historical backlog of, of writing models to draw on. 
So what we did is we worked, particularly in the, the first two years of, of coming to the school, was, was quality first teaching. You know, what that meant, what inclusive teaching meant, about the idea that actually these children with these needs, these additional needs, needed to be taught more by a qualified teacher and not less. So what the expectation was actually going to classrooms, that you'd see the teacher with those children and not outside the classroom like the were traditionally. You do see a lot of kind of um, the visual or the kind of multi-sensory lessons happening lower down but then they kind of slide off when you get into key stage four. We know that those things are successful lower down the school and I suppose it's making sure that we have that continuity all the way through to make sure that learners are having the same experiences um, throughout their Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 lessons as well. There's been a huge shift in the way teaching assistants have worked here and I think our teaching assistants really understand now that, uh, that their role is to, um, to help children learn and to not, not to do work for children to, but to make sure they're learning. So we've put in a lot of training and we've, we're constantly talking about questioning um, and multi-sensory resources and uh, activities that that the, t that the TAs can support children with and uh, about the um, children doing all the work and not the teaching assistants doing all the work. So it's, it, uh, um, I think our teaching assistants are really, really very good at that and understand that a lot more now. It's about ensuring consistency for when new teachers come on board and it, 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 using videos, using coaching to support those teachers get very on board very quickly to the way that we do things at Cutslow. Um, so they can understand when we talk about quality first teaching, so they can see for themselves what the classroom should look like when they're set up, so they can do it a lot quicker than waiting for, for maybe a term or two terms to get into the step in the way that we do things at, at Cutslow, and that's I think the next step really. We are in the a process of making our own departmental toolkit mm -hmm. of these are all the strategies that we would expect to be using, um, not all the time, but using regularly within our practice um, and making sure that we are working together to embed those in our practice. Okay so the, ne the next steps for our school are um, actually more of the same because a, a school is, a, is an ever-moving culture, we've always got new teachers, new teaching assistants, new areas of expertise so I, I think uh, it's about constantly monitoring, constantly supporting teachers uh, constantly um, having discussions about individual pupils, constantly topping up the training. You can never sit back and think, well, I'm sorted, everyone knows what they're doing. And, and, and where there are areas of really good practice in the school and expertise, um, sharing that. And I think, I think moving forward, we'd like to develop more um, team teaching and, and uh, colleagues uh, working with each other to, to promote best, best practice. Over the two days of making this film, we have learnt that the leaders of these four schools are committed to improving outcomes for all learners by focusing on quality first teaching. They know that by focusing teachers on improving their practice to meet the needs of the young people who find learning difficult, that they will improve outcomes for all learners. They recognise that there is still work to do and are committed to ensuring inclusive teaching and learning is at the heart of their school development priorities. We know that closing the achievement gap requires the focus and commitment of all leaders of all schools. We hope that this film will encourage dialogue in schools about what is meant by quality first teaching and where teachers are on their journey towards meeting the needs of all learners effectively in their classrooms. The Oxfordshire School Inclusion Team encourages schools to join with us as we work together to meet the challenge of ensuring that we are constantly improving outcomes for all learners through all phases of education across our county.